to come to mobile money, which is the most common um, money service that they use for, for many people. Okay? It's like a mini bank on their phone. Yeah. But then over the years, and the most recent report by the Bank of Ghana shows that the type of fraud that occurs within the EMI space yeah. keeps surging. We never really see a decline. It keeps rising and rising. What's your view on that? I must say that for fraud on the mobile money space, mm -hmm. it is something that would be with us for some time. Mm. The reason being that we have seen an increase in the usage of the platform. Mm. When it came late, uh, 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 about 2009 thereabouts, mm. the numbers on the mobile money platforms were very less. Mm. But fast forward now, you can see that there are a lot of subscribers on the mobile money platforms and the volume of transactions the value of transactions are so huge so fraud being a rational activity would certainly gear towards that angle it would now be targeting mobile money users that that is how the system is in fact when you study criminology and you know, uh, uh, the methods or schemes that criminals use. Mm. They look at places where they can get the most people. Mm. And you realize that as the numbers have increased, their ability to get people to defraud will also be high. Mm. The probability will be very high. Yeah, yeah. That is why the fraud schemes over there are becoming so sophisticated. Mm. It doesn't only target the individuals but even the financial institutions that actually offer this mobile money services mm. we have had instances where criminals impersonate telcos and target financial institutions just to defraud them on their mobile money wallets or whatever portal that they are using mm. so so the space is actually very ripe for the criminals and we would have to be up and doing in terms of preventing or putting preventive and detective protocols in place to mitigate uh, the fraud that target the yeah. platform. Mm -hmm.